Hi guys! As you can see, I got my Christmas lights, I got my birds, so it is time for a December TBR. <laughs> very excited for December reads. I can't believe it's already the end of the year. We're still kind of in that season where I like to mood read a lot. So I've selected some books that I think will be really great for both the Christmassy holiday season as well as like the cold winter season that is setting upon us as well. So I'm really excited to share these books with you today. Diving right into it, I'm planning on reading A Winter's Promise by Christelle Dabo Dabos? Dabos? This is a book that's been translated from French. It is part of the Mirror Visitor Quartet. The title is A Winter's Promise, so that already gave me wintry vibes. But it also has a very like icy setting, which I'm intrigued by. This book follows a young woman named Ophelia who has both the ability to travel through mirrors and to be able to touch an object and know its entire history, which is really interesting. And she's part of a clan that like lives, like all the cities in this world are like floating arcs. And so she's part of a clan on one arc and she's getting an arranged marriage to a man from another arc. That arc is so completely different from sort of the world that she knows. And I believe his home arc is very cold. And so she's got to get used to that as well. So I'm not entirely sure what the entire series is really about other than that. But the premise of this sounded really interesting. Again, I like the sort of magical ability she has. I think that'll be really cool. And I've heard that the arranged marriage dynamic is kind of like Hermione and Draco from uh, Harry Potter. And I don't think it was ever actually a fan fiction, but I've seen it compared to like that. So I imagine they have a pretty frosty start, but I'm curious to see how it develops. The next book is actually one I got in a fairy loot box at like the very beginning of the year, but it came out kind of like as I was transitioning more into a springtime mood. So I wanted to save this more for a colder time of year. And that is The Bright and the Pale by Jessica Rubinkowski. And again, this is a fairy loot edition. It has these really beautiful, like glittery blue sprayed edges and it's got artwork on the inside of the dust jacket and stuff. So this is a really pretty special edition. This is some artwork for the letter from the author as well, which is really pretty. This one I believe is a fantasy and I think it might have to do with Faye. I'm not entirely sure. It's been a while since I've seen the description for this book, but I know I was saving it for winter. So I believe the story is about a teenager. Her name is Valeria and she believes that everyone is trapped there's this dark magical hold on her village and everyone she loves is trapped in an unbreakable sheet of ice. So she has to find a way to rescue her family and her best friend. So it sounds like a fun adventurer story. It's inspired by Russian folklore apparently and I think it'll make a great wintery read. This next one's kind of like a modern classic. It just had a sequel come out, which is what put it on my radar. And it's also a bit of a historical fiction, magical realism sort of story. And the cover gives me snowy winter vibes. So I'm excited to get into that one. And it is The Gollum and the Ginny by Helene Wecker. Again, I picked this one up a while ago and I'm not entirely sure what it's about other than it takes place in, it looks like 1899 New York and follows a go golem named Chava and a Ginny named Ahmad. Chava is a creature made of clay brought to life by a strange man who dabbles in dark Kabbalistic magic. And Ahmad is a being of fire born in the ancient Syrian desert. These two somehow become friends and are sort of like released in looks like Manhattan, which is interesting. And they try to fit in with their neighbors while masking their true natures, which sounds interesting. I don't know. Again, this, this story is like, I don't want to know too much about it going in, but I've heard really excellent things. And I like a good historical, fantastical fiction. So I think this will be really good. And if I like it, I will definitely pick up the sequel. Next up, we have a newer release from the beginning of the year. And that is The Witch's Heart by Genevieve Gornishek. This, I believe, is more inspired from like Norwegian folklore um, or Norse mythology. And it follows the witch that becomes the wife of Loki, I believe. <laughs> 
So, and this is more of like her side of the story that never really gets explored in traditional mythology. So I thought that sounded really interesting. And the Norse aspect of it, again, gave me some wintry vibes. And I just, I love like good folktale and I think this will be a really cozy read. I'm not quite sure what to expect as far as like the mood goes, if it's gonna be like a happy or sad story, but it sounds really interesting. And I wanna get more into like, I feel like mythology retellings and stuff have been, have been pretty popular lately and I haven't really been following that trend very much, but there's several books in that genre that I wanna read. So I figured this would be a good one for winter. Next up, we have a book that has been on my TBR for so long. It's the second book in a trilogy. I read the first one a couple months ago with my friend Stephanie, and she has since blasted through the rest of the series, and I have yet to pick up the second one. Not because I didn't like the first one, but because it was such a bummer, and I just, I needed some time before I could mentally sort of delve back into this world. That is The Dragon Republic by R.F. Kuang. This is the second book in the Poppy War series, and again, really fantastic story, but follows a young woman who develops shamanistic powers and binds herself to this very vengeful god of fire that just wants to consume everything. And she becomes sort of a conduit for this god's power and utilizes it in a war that she's involved in. And it's just, you really see the brutality of war kind of on both sides. She's fighting for one side that is very inspired by like Chinese culture and history. And the enemy is very inspired by Japanese culture and peoples. And it's just the central conflict is so heavy and you really see the toll it takes on our heroine, both on her sort of spirit and morality. And it's, again, the first one was so good, but really weighed heavily on my mind. So I've needed to give it some time, but I do really want to continue this series, especially so I can talk about it with Stephanie, because again, it's been so long and she's been very patiently waiting to talk about it with me. So I'm excited to get to this one. Hopefully I can read this one and then pick up the last book in the trilogy, The Burning God, much faster than I've managed to get around to this one. But uh, we shall see. I'm not sure how crushing this one is gonna be compared to the first one. Can't imagine it'll be any less though. So <laughs> yeah, excited to read that one. Um, can you be excited for and dreading a thing at the same time? Because that's kind of how I'm feeling about this. And last up on my official TBR for the month, we have The Broken Girls by Simone St. James. I recently read The Sundown Motel by her and thought it was so good. And I really loved the way that she handled dual timelines and sort of unfolding this paranormal mystery. And I really wanted to pick up her other book that's out before she has a new one coming out in the beginning of 2022. I can't remember if it's January or February, but I wanted to read this one before her next one comes out so I can pick that up and kind of delve right into it because I really love her writing style and it's just, uh, the last one was so engrossing and this one has to do with like a haunted girls school question mark. So I'm really excited about that. Last time we had a haunted motel, now we have a haunted boarding school. We followed dual timelines from 1950 and then also 2014 and these two stories sort of intertwining and revealing things about one another. And again, I, I really enjoyed the Sundown Motel. So wanted to pick up this one. This cover sort of like reminds me of how it looks outside right now in Maine. So I think that's kind of why I gravitated towards it for December reading. And I have been wanting to read more mysteries lately. I do feel like I have a couple on my TBR and they're just not like what I necessarily grab first thing, but they are starting to pile up. So I feel like I should get to them. And you know, you can only read so many fantasy books in a month, especially where so many of them are part of a series. So figure this will be a good kind of like palette cleanser in between fantasy books and I'm really looking forward to this one so all right and that wraps up my sort of hard December TBR I have left myself a lot of room for mood reading because especially with the holidays coming up I feel like I might want to kind of go off list and grab some cozier reads some more feel-good reads but these are the ones I definitely want to get to this month so Hopefully by the end of the month in my wrap up, I will be able to tell you my thoughts about all of these. And yeah, I'm really excited to get to them. 
Let me know down in the comments if you've picked up any of these. What, what did you think? Which one should I pick up first? Let me know. Feel free to follow my socials down in the description box below. Like, subscribe, and have a wonderful day. Bye.